I'm glad to be here. Uh, I grew up in India, but now live in the United States. I'm a physician by profession, and this is one of my passions that I do, go around presenting this seminar. So, without any further ado, let's begin. Allahu Akbar. That is the Muslim cleric, the mullah or the imam. He wants to call the faithful. Allah is the proper name of God in Arabic. Ho Akbar is great. Allah is great. What he really means to say is Allah is greater than any other. And with these words, he calls the faithful to Salat, prayer, one of the five fundamental pillars of the Islamic faith. Shema Israel. Shema Israel intones a Jewish rabbi. He's got a kippur on his head and a talik or the sacred shawl around his shoulders because now he is the presence of the law and the prophets, the Torah. These are the words that Jehovah God gave Moses on Mount Sinai. Shema Israel. Adonai Elohinu. Adonai Accord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord God, the Lord is one. Namo Amitabha. Namo Amitabha. That is the Japanese Tibetan. His Tibetan counter, Japanese Buddhist, his Tibetan counterpart would say, Om Mani Padmi Hum. Om Mani Padmi Hum. That is transliterated to, Oh, the jewel in the lotus. It is one of the most sacred chants of the Buddhists. Namo Amitabha. Namo means name. Amitabha is the name of a bodhisattva. Who is a bodhisattva? A bodhisattva is somebody who has reached the penultimate state of attainment in the Buddhist faith. The next stage would be a Buddha. But he refrains from being a Buddha yet because he wants to help human beings. And so at that stage, he presides over a paradise and Amitabha presides over what is known as the pure land paradise. There is no other name under heaven. That is the Christian bishop or the Christian preacher. No other name under heaven given among men by whereby we must be saved. And the name he refers to is Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ. The Christ meaning the Messiah, the anointed one. The other names that he had were Emmanuel, God with us. Yeshua bin Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary. Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, deep in the Indian peninsula from where I come. Shaved head like mine, robed, bare feet. As they near the object of their pilgrimage, they break into a chant. Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare is obeisance. Rama is the seventh incarnate of the god Vishnu. The triune gods of the Hindus, Brahma the creator, Shiva the destroyer, and Vishnu the preserver. And Rama is the seventh incarnate of the god Vishnu. Krishna is the eighth incarnate of the god Vishnu who come down once in an age to help us human beings. Diverse, interesting, this religious world. But on the other side of the fence stands the person who does not believe in any of these. He is the atheist. And he looks upon these people who have all these chants and all these prayers and all these claims and he says, Oh, poor deluded souls, sipping at the Marxist opium of the masses. Because that is what Karl Marx called religion, opium of the masses. You guys don't know how to face the reality of life. And so you go nibbling on some promises of some utopia out there up in the clouds, there is no such thing, there is no God, there is no heaven, there is no afterlife, nothing. You do not know how to face the reality of life. So when I was faced with this during my search, I asked myself, well, if that is the case, 
what is this thing called reality? What do they mean by reality? Here's Bertrand Russell, who in the previous generation was a very vocal, brilliant philosopher from England. And when they asked him about his stance, this is what he said. It is only on the firm foundation of unyielding despair that the soul's habitation can henceforth be safely built. I read it over and over again. There seemed to be a severe clash of ideas. How could despair form a foundation? And how can unyielding despair ever be safe? It was Quentin Smith, the co-author of Theism, Atheism and the Big Bang Cosmology, who was even more blunt than this. This is what he said. The only reasonable belief is that we came from nothing, by nothing, and for nothing. My first inclination to that statement was, what is it based on? Why such a wide sweeping statement describing the entire existence of the human race? From nothing, by nothing, for nothing. What was it based on? And I came to a very simple conclusion. It is based on nothing, except a very private and a personal opinion, just like yours and mine. But nothingness is not an easy principle to live by. It is a very hard, exacting principle. And that is why we hear the words of Jean-Paul Sartre. He was a French philosopher also believed in the same thing. But he decided to describe the reasons why he was an atheist. And after he had set his philosophy step by step, logic by logic, and put it out there, he said, look, I have shown you why atheism is the way to go. That's the only reasonable way to live. And then when he had said it all, he said, one question remains why I have not committed suicide yet. Sometimes we smile, but he was not smiling when he wrote those words. They are real. The nothingness of Quentin Smith will pull you to the unyielding despair of Bertrand Russell and drag you to the precipice of Jean-Paul Sartre. But, just because somebody was despairing and wanted to yield his life and wanted to commit suicide did not make him or her wrong. Why? Because I knew many people who swore by God or by their religious beliefs. When life became oppressive, they also wanted to commit suicide. Have you seen many of them? Heard of them? Yes, of course. So just because somebody said there is no God and wanted to commit suicide didn't make him wrong. That's because somebody said there is a God and wanted to commit suicide didn't make him or her wrong either. I was still faced with the question, is there or is there not a God in existence? Is there or is there not anything supernatural beyond what we can see, feel and think? That was the basic question. To that question, there are only two answers. There is a God in existence. There is no God in existence. Many people say, I don't know. That is not an answer. That is a response. And a response probably based on maybe, maybe ignorance, or maybe a claim that there just is not sufficient evidence and information to make a decision. But it is not an answer to the question, is there a God in existence? There are only two answers. One, there is no God, he is fictitious. There is a God, he is factual. I had to address that right at a critical part of my search. Because if that was settled in the way that there was no God in existence, there was no need for me to worry about any of the religions on earth. What use looking for a named river or a lake 
if the existence of water itself was in question.